Hey there bears, I'm Strawberry Stab Wound and I have been so excited to make this video, not just for you guys, but also for myself, and I really hope you guys enjoy hearing about my characters. I was supposed to make this video, I think two weeks ago now, which sucks, because last week or two weeks ago, I don't remember, oh my god, time, but I was supposed to make an OC week thing, so you guys tell me about your characters, and I make the whole OC universe thing, then I tell you guys about my OCs in my universe, and then my mic broke, and then my new mic came broken, and I think it might be my laptop now, but that is a problem for later, I figured out how to deal with it. But yeah, so hope you guys like this video, I hope you guys didn't forget about me because I didn't post for a week, onto the actual topic of this video. So I have four main OCs, their names are Vivi, Ayanoya, Nara, and Kalaya. All of them are bounty hunters for ghosts, but in my world, the ghosts aren't really what people expect. Warning in this video, I'm not gonna give a lot of story details just because I don't wanna spoil it. I'm working really hard on this story and I just, I want everything and all the details to be done before I go off and I change things and then people are kind of confused. And then just so y'all know, some characters will have more backstory and stuff like that because once again, there's just so much story stuff and spoilers and I don't really know how to censor all of it. So I'll still make sure to include a lot of like fun and interesting facts about every character and any triggers or anything will be in the description with timestamps and I'll put them on the screen and stuff. Right now as well, if you can't deal with any of these things or they make you uncomfortable, you can either click off the video or timestamps. Take care of yourself, you deserve to feel comfortable. I'll start with Vivi. They're non-binary and their pronouns are they, them. Y'all will notice a pattern with my characters because all of them are Blasian and Vivi's no different. They're mixed black and Japanese. Vivi has gone through so many changes throughout the years it at first i was like no like they really don't look that different and then i actually take a step back and i look at their old designs and i'm like no no they're completely different actually and i was just in denial so here actually is their first design oh oh they're a little baby oh they're so tiny ignore how nara and kalaya look in this by the way we will get to them we will get to them and they will be shamed but for now we will focus on vivi it's actually really interesting how much they've changed because before I wanted them to have big dresses and be super feminine, which I still I still want them to be feminine now, just more in a different way. And they wore huge dresses, like layered dresses, but that just didn't work out due to the fact that they're a bounty hunter. And you know, bounty hunters need to be swift, they need to be fast, they need to be able to be stealthy. You can't be stealthy in a dress that is like a bright ass color and is, is so big. Like you can't. If, your dress is like three U's stacked next to each other. It, you, you cannot just hide. So I had to get rid of that idea and I instead want them to still feel feminine just in a more different way because I feel like we just really do not get enough feminine non-binary rep, you know? Like we get a lot of non-binary rep where they're very masculine or just androgynous. And I don't know, I just, that's cool. And those people deserve to be represented, but it sucks when like you don't see people who are feminine and still very valid in their non-binary ness um, binariness, <laughs> new word. But yeah, so that's something I really want to do with their character. I just, it felt, I felt like it was important. And especially, I actually created their character when I was going through a lot of stuff with my gender and I was figuring out my own pronouns and my self and they are definitely representing that part of me that, yeah. <laughs> I stuck to the idea of them wearing big dresses for a while actually. And then all of a sudden there was this shift where I just wanted them to have a jester kind of vibe Though I did change that because while I thought the hair was really cool, I want this to be a comic and I would not be able to draw that hair every single panel. That would be very hard and my wrist would honestly like snap out of place and then wouldn't be able to really draw ever again. So I then for my story kind of branched out into a kind of more, not cyberpunk-esque, but kind of like inspired I don't know if you, I hope people can see the, I hope you guys can see the vibe because that's what I was going for. That's more what I wanted and I also, they were originally like 13 and I aged them up to 19. No real reason, I just, I was like, eh, I want them to be all adults and it just didn't make sense for my story for them to be so much younger than the rest of my characters because all of my characters are over 25 except for Vivi. So I just feel like that wouldn't make much sense for me. Also, here is the first character she I made for them. <gasps> Yeah, no, it's okay. Boomy, boomy, yep. Keep it coming because I deserve it. I don't know what I was thinking with the, the pigtails and then like the braids at the end. Why were the braids so thin? It literally looks like rat tails underneath them. It is no, it's awful. And I'm sorry for everyone who had to see that. Uh, I will not give compensation because I'm poor, but I'm sorry. <laughs> also, y'all may notice that each character has a gas mask. That's because a little bit of story stuff. 
The ghost essence, or ghost gas, I guess you could say, is toxic for them to breathe in. I know it sounds weird, but trust me. And now we're just onto Vivi's personality and stuff. Their main thing is actually graffiti. Nara introduced it to them and they have been in love with it ever since. And another thing they do is they put stickers everywhere. They just love tagging things. It's, they, they, it's one of their main things. They just find the most joy in doing that. So usually in their room or in an area they're in, I draw graffiti everywhere. Their weapon is an ax and they have two shuriken that when they throw them together, they morph into their weapon. Y'all will see a pattern. I'm very into things morphing into other things or cool ways for weapons to come out. It's just, it's one of my fixations and I do it all the time. Vivi is selectively mute and is fluent in ASL. Do not underestimate them though because they are sassy as hell and always have something to say. Well, sign. They aren't really interested in romance, and sometimes they just say they're unlabeled, but if someone called them ace and they're okay with it, it doesn't really affect them. They're not a labeled person, but it also doesn't hurt them. And they still have their flags around, if that makes sense. Some things I personally love to know about characters are their favorite foods, their music taste, their handwriting, and this is more of a thing for my story, but their designated color. So here's a whip of something I'm working on. I have been avoiding this drawing for a while, but as you can see, they all have a designated color and Vivi's is a light purplish pink. I wanted the colors to kind of go from pink is the longest you've been there to purple is you are new. So Nara and Ayanoya's colors are in a pinkish because not they're not only sisters, but they started this group and then Vivi came after them, purplish pink, and then Kalaya came last. So hers is a purplish blue not really any pink in there because of the fact she came in so much later than everyone else. They prefer intense sweets over anything, but they prefer spicy and salty food in terms of dinner and lunch and stuff like that. They are very much a lover of specifically animal gummies. Gummy sharks are their favorite because they're predictable and it's just, it's cute. Though they really hate gummy bears. They don't like the shape of the bears. They have never explained it to anyone, but they just refuse to eat them. It has to be sharks or like, like worms or something, but they hate gummy bears. Yeah, I know, they're so different and cool and unique for that. <laughs> they also really do not like cake or pastries or anything like that. The texture just throws them off and they can't finish it. And sometimes they can if they're in a very specific mood, but even then they'll probably take two bites and say, okay, well, I'm done. Here, have my food. They're at their happiest though when Nara and Kalaya cook together because they're easily the only ones who can cook a decent meal. And come on, a mix of Filipino and Indian cuisine? Oh my goodness, that sounds amazing. Vivi's favorite music genre is funk, but one of their favorite musical artists is Poppy. Now, if you don't know, Poppy is a musical artist that came out, I honestly have no idea. I'm gonna say a random number, 2016. Um, God, I hope I'm right. Oh, I'm probably not right, but anyways, she came out uh, a little bit ago and she started making like pop music, like she did that girls in bikini song. I won't sing it because I'm such a good singer that I will totally sound like the song and get copyrighted. Would you guys judge me if that was a genuine fear that what if I sang it and I got copyrighted? That's not how that works, but um, nonetheless. And uh, she actually, stuff happened and now she makes rock music or metalish music. I'm not very good at categorizing music and understanding what it is sometimes, but it's amazing. Please give her music a listen to. Oh, it's so cool and little ramble. She, she's just so cool. She went from like, you know, the pink kind of Barbie-ish aesthetic. Um, she was like very blonde and stuff like that. Like she had like, her hair was like a light, light blonde. And she wore all pink to now she like wears all black. She dyed her hair brown and she's healing and it's really fucking cool to see. So definitely give her a listen if you're interested in that type of music. If you listen to her old music though, I'm not gonna judge you because it's still good and it's still supporting her. I just love when people have a specific music genre that they love and listen to, but then their favorite musical artist is the complete opposite because I'm like that with a lot of my favorite things and I just think it's charming. And here's one thing that I love to show about my characters and see about others is here's their handwriting. It, this is from an old drawing with some other things I'll show, but I just love that their handwriting is big, you know, bubbly. I feel like it's very fitting. So here's some things that I'll say about Vivi, some things that would be in their bag. They have a fidget cube because they're very autistic. And then they have this super cute headphone case holder that's a little bear mascot I designed that's honestly one of their hyperfixation characters. They have this little guy on their pen and as a sticker on their phone case, and their phone case is a collage type with a bunch of cute stickers and their flags. They also have a super cute phone charm. I just thought it was fitting and I want my own phone charm so bad. Next to the pen is their sketchbook, which on the cover is a creature. It's one I created, which is called a Ravoshnai, which yes, uh, it, it's from the language I created. I may have dumbed down how much I have worked on for my story, but anyways. 
The last thing they have is a Switch. My wife got one, and, but it's pretty much mine. I'm the only one who plays on it and I love Animal Crossing so much. I got into it like what, like three years late? So I actually haven't played Animal Crossing for a while and the reason is I accidentally missed a day because I was busy and I d couldn't get all of like the coins or something from the ATM and I was pissed and I didn't go back on. And then when I saw how sad my villagers were when I was gone for a week, I have been avoiding it because I felt so bad about it and I'm so depressed about it. And before I end this tangent, my favorite uh, villagers are Ellie. Love her. Elephants are my favorite freaking animal. I will not. Oh, sorry. I love elephants so much. It is Ellie the pig and then the one with the unibrow. I said monobrow. Monobrow and unibrow are the same thing? Nonetheless. And her. Um, she's so cute. Oh, and the, 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 the goat guy. I think, I don't know, but he's so cute and I love that he is super into sports and stuff and my, I'm not, but he's just so tiny and I love him. So those are my favorites, but back on to Vivi. I don't have a lot of story stuff for them developed yet, but I will say that they are super intelligent and I'm thinking of them being the healer. Also, here's the voice claim. <laughs> and do you, do you guys get it? <laughs> Cause, um, okay, sorry. Anyways, it's cause you're mute. Their birthday is November 2nd, and I love them. Thank you so much for listening to my rant on them. Next is Ayanoya. Her and Nara are sisters, and they're both mixed, Filipino and black. Ayanoya is also trans and a lesbian. There's some complicated stuff with their characters, and they're kind of like dead. So Ayanoya died when she was 21, but she's actually 41. The, yeah, okay. Hope you guys understand. The first drawing I had done of Ayanoya was actually of an angle I hadn't tried before, so was just automatically like, I love this character because it was something new. And it was of her and Nara on a smoke break in their underwear for some reason, because why not? Um, they weren't sisters when I made this, honestly, it was just because Nara is and was my favorite character, so I just kind of drew her and found a way to insert her in every drawing. I hope you guys understand, because I do this all the time still. <laughs> yeah, and I just had an attachment with her from, from the get-go, honestly. So some vital parts of her design are her huge hair and fangs and her prosthetic leg. Oh, and also her cute ass dimples. She's so pretty, the prettiest really. In terms of being a bounty hunter, she is the most experienced by far. She's fast as hell and super stealthy and is advanced in both short and long range weapons. Here's her weapon, a big ass hammer. Though I haven't updated it in years, I might do this before the video. Um, if I do do it before the video, here's the new one. Um, and if I don't update it, I'll put a booing noise, you know, so and everyone can boo me in the comments I do like the concept of a big-ass hammer, but I do want to change it like to be more fitting for her character Like I don't know why it's this color. I don't know why it's not fitting for her So I do need to redesign that so I started this thing a bit back where I wrote a whole character analysis about her character and her story because and I think this is a very important thing that I think people should do I asked myself some questions about my characters which were What are each of the characters themes and what do I want the audience to learn from them? One thing I do in all of my story notes is I ask myself questions and write these questions down. In this process, there are never dumb questions, only imperative ones, at least in my opinion. I'm not a professional, I'm just a passionate person. But yeah, before I go on about the tiny details, I wanted to share the section I wrote for her. Only a annoying section was written because I lost the document before I could like actually finish it for the other characters, but I found it a few days ago and I just wanted to read hers out because I put a lot of time and effort into it. Just before I start, warning on the screen, timestamps in the description. Thank you so much, take care of yourself. By the way, I don't go into graphic detail or anything like that, it's just references. Ayanoya's story is about feeling like she is unable to be helped. That no matter what she does, she will never be satisfied with anything others do for her, so instead of communicating or looking into why her standards are so impossibly high, she instead blames her others for not being able to be good enough. She knows that this is unfair, and she knows that this will and has led to feelings of disappointment and others feeling inadequate around her, but in her head it is impossible to give that up. She is an older sibling that wasn't able to properly heal and instead continues her parents' patterns. She is not blissfully unaware. She is suffocatingly so. This is one of the reasons her standards are so high. It is a weird advanced way to hurt herself and keep others away. She yearns for connection, to be protected in the way she never was. But being independent for so long has caused her to feel cold and undeserving of any type of care. She knows she is her father's daughter, in every way that kills her. In all the ways her father and mother emotionally tormented and beat her down, she is one of the same. But hers is internal rather than external, and thus this leads to a never-ending cycle of her beating down her inner child until she feels she can't go on anymore. Now, besides that long-ass tangent, 
her growth is very different. After going to great lengths to avoid consequences and the conversations she is simply too afraid to have, she has to confront herself and others all at once as it is officially unavoidable. She shuts down and becomes withdrawn as she has no understanding on how to cope or grieve her old self and relationships. Instead, she learns she has to rebuild these broken relationships and comprehend the fact that they will never be the same. And even if that's not what she wants, and even if she wishes she could go back to before, she can't, and that's okay. Sometimes all you need is a sip of water before you can beg for a jug. Whatever the fuck that means. I want the audience to learn that healing is a scary ass process, and when we're traumatized to a certain point and we don't acknowledge these parts of ourselves, we will become our parents in all the wrong ways. And it's okay to acknowledge and come to terms with those parts of yourself. The best way to start healing is, once again, to come to terms with the parts of yourself that scare you the most. So yeah, that was a lot, and I totally don't relate at all. <laughs> but if I haven't made it obvious, I love character analyzation. It is so important to me, and it just makes me so happy. And I did spend a while on that, so I hope you guys like it. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, anyways, uh, on to more fun stuff. Her designated color, as I said before, is a reddish pink, and she's been the longest. And here's her handwriting. Very classy, very old school cursive like her. She hates her print writing, though, because it is literally chicken scratch. It's just bad. She writes and then she can't understand what she wrote. It looks like you gave a toddler, like a one-year-old, a pen said, go at it, kid. And mind you, she is in her 40s, so she's even more embarrassed of it. <laughs> she also has a lot of joint problems. Um, and aches sometimes, so also writing a cursive is just easier. It gets- she can do it faster and sometimes her brain is just going so fast that she- her scratch- chicken scratch- her chicken scratch cannot keep up, so that's also another reason. Ayanoya is a salty and sour girly through and through, like she'll lick Sour Patch Kids and get off all of the sour stuff, but once there's even a semblance of sweet, she just throws it away. She also eats popcorn with every single type of flavoring on it, like those little, uh, like things you pour on it. She eats her popcorn with specifically every single one every single one or at least seven at least seven of them and when my ocs go to the theater she gets her own bucket of popcorn because nobody else can stomach that shit her favorite music genres are 80 japanese city pop r&b and hyper pop that's right she's got range quote unquote she's not just a bounty hunter however she's also a tattoo artist and a piercer and even though fun fact she's deathly afraid of needles <laughs> That's why, if any of y'all have noticed, she has no piercings anywhere, especially when you look at her face compared to all of my characters who have a bunch of face piercings. She has none. And when I draw her wearing earrings, she's actually wearing clip-ons. And some fun facts, she actually gave everyone their piercings, all of their tattoos and stuff. And farther into the story, she actually gives Kalaya her tattoos, and she even learns how to do henna for her, and a little story stuff. Ayanoya has a bravo schnei, which is like her familiar. And I'm just gonna say her voice claim, I will link the post I made with them in the description. I heard people were getting copyrighted, rid it, getting copyright for it, so I don't want that. But it's a hyena from Lion King. It's, it's, ugh, yes. And her birthday is October 22nd. Quick intermission time. This is a section of my video where I talk about something unrelated for a few minutes. So stretch, get some water, and listen up. I thought it would be really fun if I read off some of my favorite cartoon crushes I got and just share my thoughts on them. I'll just be listing off like five. I got two people from that Wild Kratz show. Okay, I got Chris and Aviva. I actually, I don't know what they look like. Let me do that right now as I talk because I'm professional and I am good at this. But also, you know what? You signed up for this, okay? You subscribe, you signed up for this. Oh, oh, they're cute. Okay, no, I get the hype for Aviva. Chris is just like a guy. He's just some guy, but Aviva's cute, you know? So, you know what? Good on you. It's just really funny because I got so many people from the Wildcraft show. I still get edits. Of, I don't, I didn't even know that show existed until like literally a few months ago. But they're everywhere on my viewer page. And you know what? Good for you guys. Respect. Respect. Uh, Principal Bump from the Owl House. I said this in my ending part of my last video, but you guys are just... I love you guys, that is amazing. I do not understand the hype at all. And then in my last video comment section, you know what comment I got? Principal Bump is so underrated, ugh. Hey, um, no he's not. I don't think he should be rated at all. He's just an old guy with long hair and a devil baby on his head. I don't remember, I haven't seen the show in forever. Um, but you know what? Yeah. Gilfs keep the economy going, I guess. I'm trying to support you guys as much as it disturbs me. <laughs> By the way, all this isn't fun. I'm not- I don't actually think you guys are gross or anything. Okay, and then the- Ow. Okay, 
Ow, I hit my shoulder, my elbow, ow. The next one is any character from Trolls? Um, okay, so um, guys, we may need to have a talk about learning to keep things to yourself. <laughs> I'm joking, obviously. I think that's so interesting. I genuinely do not understand like the obsession with the Trolls characters because they're just like little guys. Like they're so tiny and they're like, the feet are like the size of like their heads, I think. And I don't know, I do not get it. If someone wrote me an essay on why they think the trolls are attractive, I swear I would make a video of me reading it out. I would make trolls fan art. I would I would print the essay, put it on my wall and make sure I look at it and read it every single day so that I can atone for my sins, okay? And so I understand your guys' perspective. Plus I just wanna read it, I think it'd be so funny. No hate though, I actually watched the new trolls movie with my wife and I just, it was okay. I, I will admit, maybe I, I, I don't mean this in a bad way about the movie, it's just I don't really understand all the hype for it. I was like, okay, this is good. But it was also like a little too overstimulating for me to watch. Like I was kind of overwhelmed and I had to look away and like draw while the movie was on because I was like, this is so much and I kind of like, I can't do this, but good on you guys. I, I appreciate the honesty. And then my last one is a character from Octonauts. I have nothing to say. That's honestly kind of cute. You know what? Let your inner child have a good time. <laughs> so intermission over. Kalia is next and she's the character I've had almost as long as Nara, which was the first character I created. Fun fact about Kalia, because I completely pushed this out of my head, here's her really old art of herself. Okay, the story was actually gonna be of Nara and Kalia and it was gonna be a superhero story. Yeah, it was gonna be a superhero story. And Kalia was a hero and Nara was the villain. And then it turned into like a, what's it called? A detective comic? I don't know what the hell I was doing with that because I didn't fucking stick to that. Well, I kind of did. There's some stuff about Kalia's story, but I won't get into that right now. But yeah, the changes they've gone through are very interesting. And I completely like push it out of my head because I'm so ashamed of it. And my old art style is also like really ugly. She has definitely changed a lot, as I just said. In her early art, for this story specifically, she had short hair and then she evolved to just having her hair up in a really big bun on top of her head. But the way I drew it before was just so bad and ugly. Like it looked like her hair was a different length every time and it was just a mess. Like it looks like her head was stacked on top of itself twice. But the thing is, I would always say her hair was the same length every single time. But no, no, it wasn't. I was like, oh, her hair is still down to her shoulders. How is it down to her shoulders? And her hair is four of her heads stacked on top of each other. Hey. Hey, dumbass, let's think about that. I'm only kidding, but some physical characteristics that she has that I just love about her are her moles. She has five on her face. And I actually decided later on that I wanted to give her a beautiful Santa nose, but I just, I struggled with it a little bit cause I wasn't, I haven't been exposed to noses like that, but so it was new, but honestly, I picked it up really quickly. And I actually saw a post that I heavily agreed with about how ethnic features are just not hard to draw. And I totally agree with that. Tangent time, I don't think ethnic features are hard to draw at all. I think what's hard is breaking out of Eurocentric beauty standards and just certain beauty standards in general and fighting against what we're taught at Sonora. For example, when I was younger, I only drew white characters. I only drew skinny characters and I thought that was fine. They never looked like me. I couldn't relate to them but I wanted to make pretty characters and I thought that's what I had to do to make them beautiful. Make them skinny, white, and nothing like me. However, when 2020 hit and a certain thing happened, I hate when people make those jokes, but I don't want to say the word. Don't want to get kicked off. Anyways, I was able to be inside and really look within myself, my values, my art, and how I view myself. I stopped shaving my armpits and leg hair because I discovered it was never for myself or for my comfort or because I liked how it looked. I did it because I was so focused on how others would respond to me and my body if I didn't do it. And then I wore my hair the way I wanted to even if I wouldn't look super feminine. And then I wore hyper feminine clothing because I wanted to. I ditched most of my clothes and discovered my love of pink and all things cutesy. Now I draw whatever I want and however I want because my views of what beautiful means has developed and opened up. Everybody is beautiful and I feel that as artists, we all need to look within ourselves and our values and think about why we don't want to draw certain people or certain features. Why say you only draw pretty people? Then I look at your account and there's no black people or bigger people or people with acne, crooked teeth or unique features. And whenever this conversation gets brought up, people get so defensive or say that they can draw whatever they want, which is true. But once again, why are you so mad and against the idea of drawing something different? It's not hard to draw ethnic features. It's hard to learn how to go against the system and mindset that has taught us ethnic features are not beautiful. Now I understand not everyone has to be beautiful. 
you know like the concept of beauty is very much like it sucks that we have to feel like we have to fit into it however as a society i feel like instead of saying that we should just say everyone is beautiful because going to, into this discussion of just like well we don't have to be beautiful it's like well everyone still wants to feel attractive you know if not everyone a lot most people so i feel like instead of saying well you don't you don't have to be beautiful because I feel super condescending, by the way, just say you are beautiful because everyone is. And we should acknowledge things we don't see a lot still as beautiful, you know? And even when I say unique features, some features aren't even like unique. Like a bunch of people have them. Just no one wants to acknowledge them because they do not fit into the beauty standard. Huh, okay. Uh, I'm very passionate about that. And now I'm not saying I'm the best artist ever. I'm definitely not. And I still struggle. And I have a lot to break down within myself too. And the difference is I'm working on it. I feel like that's what is important. I'm working on it. I draw so many different body types on the side when I practice because it's important to me. I want people to feel represented. I feel like that's just, that is what makes the difference of someone who really cares, you know? Instead of getting so angry, why don't you just practice? If you're scared and insecure about doing it wrong, then practice. You know, everyone starts somewhere, but sometimes it feels like an excuse. Okay. Oh, wow. Whew, big tangent. Okay, back to Kalaya, but please think about what I said. Okay, thank you. Hey y'all, so I'm actually gonna interrupt myself here because I just, I made some ignorant choices with my story writing and it just wasn't, uh, it wasn't right. And I was looking back at my script and listening to myself talk about it and I was like, this is dumb. This is super ignorant of me. So I just wanna come back and say, first of all, do research on people that have different backgrounds than you do. Oh my God, do it. Cause I sounded like a dumbass, okay? And I am a dumbass cause I should have done more research beforehand. So I'm just gonna say here, before I was gonna try and say that Kalaya, only spoke Hindi and didn't really know English that well, which first of all, super ignorant. Okay, people in India speak English. Okay, they do speak English and they actually uh, speak a lot of different languages. So I actually um, have the, co a, a, a more correct, hopefully, uh, backstory and I am sorry for my ignorance. I acknowledge it and I was a dumbass. Okay, I look at back at my past self and I punch her in the face. So first of all, Kalaya is fluent in Hindi, she is fluent in English, she is fluent in Telugu, and she is not as fluent, but she um, she was actually kind of cut off from her dad from learning it, but she was almost fluent in Punjabi, I think is the pronunciation. If I'm wrong, I'm so sorry. Uh, but yeah, those are the ones she's fluent in. And just to give some backstory on her mother as well, because I feel that that's really important and I just, I want this to make sense. Okay, so her mother was uh, born in, I think the pronunciation is Andhra Pradesh. I watched a bunch of videos of people pronunciating it, pronounce pronouncing it oopsies because i just feel that that's very important so yeah her mother was born in andhra uh, pradesh and she was that just reference telugu is one of the main languages there um so yeah that is where she learned it and then from her mother she actually learned punjabi and that is how you know she taught that to kalaya but because of kalaya's father as y'all will see in a second her father kind of like stopped it from happening he did not want them speaking any language ex except english in their household just for reference for you guys so yeah i will say this again she is fluent in three languages almost fluent in f uh, a fourth so that is hindi english telugu and punjabi so yeah please do research because i am super ashamed of myself thank you guys so much for listening to this rant i'm sorry for my ignorance i'm disappointed in myself but putting effort in is what matters i guess um yeah okay Bye bye. Oh, back to the video. I actually have her voice claim, and it's Kate from Bridgerton. When I heard her voice, it was literally fate. Kalaya is demisexual and honestly has only had one crush in her life. <coughs> Nara. <coughs> So she doesn't want to label herself with any sexuality. In terms of being a bounty hunter, she's the newest recruit and she's ass at close range weapons and just combat in general. This girl cannot throw a punch to actually save her life. Put her in the ring and she's done for. Ding, ding, take her out. <coughs> but she's really advanced at long range weapons like guns. Some backstory on her, just so you guys know. Warning on the screen, timestamps in description, okay. So back to around her, her dad is not a great guy at all. He was very cruel and intense towards her schooling, and her mom sadly just kind of let it happen. Kalaya's father pushed her and her mother into mainly speaking English when he was around and wouldn't let them speak of any religion except for Catholicism, and he pretty much cut them off from their own culture. For reference, her dad was gone for the first five years of her life, but came back after deciding he didn't want to be a deadbeat dad. He just wanted to be an awful one. She was pushed into Catholic school and was forced to learn archery and an instrument, specifically the harp guitar. It was Nara's idea. It's not helpful for combat, but it's silly. 
also please in the description i put a link to some beautiful harp guitar covers listen to them they are beautiful give them love give them credit it is such a soulful beautiful instrument and it's so cute and like funky looking please give them some support now onto some other fun facts claudia doesn't really have a favorite type of food she's like the least picky person ever which it's honestly it's because of like her family life so she's really easy to cook for she doesn't complain however she is not easy in the morning at all no wake her up before 9 a.m and she is pissed she is quiet and she is a little storm cloud of anger and rage I just love little details like that, honestly. Her favorite music genres are EDM, jazz, indie pop, and heavy metal. Very intense types of music, and I love her for it. Here's her handwriting. It's very neat, and she used to spend hours on it, so her dad just wouldn't shit talk her about it or be cruel about it. Her favorite animal is a bison, and this is very important because she has a bison drawing her photo literally on her phone, her notebooks, and her wallet, and as her phone wallpaper. She loves them so much. She's 26, and her birthday is January 14th, and some super cute backstory stuff. Nara used to be way taller than Kalaya when they were younger, up to high school, but then stuff happened. They couldn't see each other for, um, for a decade. And now Kalaya is a few inches taller than Nara, and... Ah, I love it so much. I love tall femmes and short studs. Damn you, Adam's family. You did this! To describe her and Nara's dynamic, it's friends. To strangers, but still yearning for a decade. Back to friends. With tension. To lovers. And one thing that I hope y'all will like is Nara's pet name for her is Angel, because when they first met as kids and they bumped into each other, Nara thought Kalaya was so pretty that she didn't think any other word was really fitting enough. Okay, so cute. Pretend this is a smooth transition into talking about Nara. Look, y'all, I'm gonna be honest, Nara is a mess, but she means well. Some fun facts about her, she's a great chef and she does roller derby on the side. I'm gonna get all the facts out of the way first and then tell y'all the backstory behind some of these little fun facts about her. Her designated color is a neonish pink to match her sister Aenoia, and that's also, um, fun fact, some stuff about her story and how she kind of feels too connected to her sister sometimes, but anyways. She loves all types of foods and honestly takes every opportunity to learn. Her favorite dessert is halo halo because it's amazing. And she always finishes off Aenoia's because Aenoia hates beans. For reference, halo halo is a Filipino dessert with all these things in it. Mmm, diagram, wow. And there's beans at the bottom. It's amazing. She's 25 and her birthday is February 23rd and her favorite music genres are Vocaloid and Funk. Her favorite Vocaloid being V4 Flower. I've never heard anyone pronounce it, but I think that's how it is. She roller skates everywhere. Like, genuinely everywhere and loves to dance while roller skating it's her favorite thing to do after a mission just to calm her down here's her handwriting very sharp and big simple some physical characteristics about her that i love are her hair and a heart-shaped uh, mole birthmark right above her lips like her cupid's bow also her weapon is very cool i think it's a whip sword so when she whips it it becomes a sword and when she presses a button it becomes a whip though i'm trying to figure out really the dynamics of it but then like the di dynamics no the technical stuff? I don't know the word, but I'm figuring it out. Now onto some backstory because I really want to talk about it. Uh, warning for things like this on screen. Once again, nothing graphic, but just mentions. So her mother passed away when she was little and Aenoia moved out before Nara was born. So Nara was stuck with only her father. This was just, that was not a very fun experience for her. Her dad was super neglectful, still caught up in the loss of his wife to be there for the only daughter that stayed. Though Nara only stayed because she was too young to leave, not because she cared about him. Nara left her house a lot. She went from school to the woods every day because she just didn't want to be home. One day she runs into the woods, ready to do her usual routine, and she bumps into another girl, seemingly around her age, and they both fall into the ground. This girl looked teary-eyed and yet put together, her hair in a tight bun with no hair out of place. I was thinking that they bond over their awful fathers and agree to meet in the woods every day just to talk to someone that understands. I feel like, for me as a kid, even though their parents are com on complete opposite sides of like the awful spectrum, there's something about that where you learn from the other's experiences and you still feel like there's someone that understands. Even if it's not the exact same situation, it's one that is still so similar and still on the awful spectrum, just on a completely different side. And I just, I feel like stuff like that is really important sometimes on how to bond when you're going through something as a kid. They meet when, I would say like about 10-ish. Kalaya confides in Nara about how she was cut off from her Indian culture and how it's just not fair and how she misses when her mother was allowed to cook the food that they liked. And yes, this is what triggered Nara's desire to cook. Nara not only wanted to feel closer to her own culture, but she wanted that for Kalaya as well. So for years, she would walk to the library, study both Indian and Filipino cuisine, and would try to cook whenever her dad was gone or sleeping, which luckily for her, he was gone every weekend, the entire weekend. She would steal tiny things like spices and fruit from a tiny market near her house, but when she tries to steal a whole pound of meat, the owner notices and decides to let Nara take some ingredients and cook in her kitchen. All she'd have to do is some cleaning around her shop, nothing intense. 
This is the only good stable figure in Nara's life and she's lovely. The old lady also gave her some clothes and just stuff like that as well and Nara still visits her grave and introduces her to Kalaya as her mom when she dies. As I got older, Nara got bolder, rhymes, and one day on Kalaya's 15th birthday, Nara sneaks into Kalaya's room and her present to her is a huge birthday dinner of Indian cuisine. Yes, she did climb a tree multiple times and she had like those glass things like full full of food and like she covered them with uh, tin foil and she did go up and down into the window or up a tree oh, very late at night because that was the only time she could do it. Yeah, she is dedicated and I love her for it. However, Nara couldn't stay and before she leaves, she kisses Kalaya's cheek and you know what she says? You know what she says? She says, <clears throat> goodbye, angel. Yeah, like that without the real <laughs> Ew, ew, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, okay, I'm sorry. <sighs> Anyways, and then she leaves. <laughs> stuff happens they can't see each other for a decade but let me tell y'all it is a very big moment and their story together is about growing with someone you love and i love them also before i end this her voice claim is janelle monet though if someone can find the female version of childish cambino's voice please let me know because i couldn't find it and i thought janelle monet was the next best choice their voice is beautiful also i think janelle monet goes by they them so just be sure to use those if you talk about them in the comments and before I do my outro, I would just like to tell you guys that I'm actually gonna post a part two today of me doing a little more rants of my characters and I'm gonna be playing Stardew Valley. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy that. I'm gonna post that today as well, just because I didn't want this video to be an hour long, but just in case you guys wanna watch that fun extra content, there it is for you. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope the rest of your day is fruity and fun. My commissions are open. The link to it is in the description below. Please subscribe, like, and share with your fellow art lovers. Hope the rest of your day is pretty and fun again. Bye bye. <sighs> so I don't really have much to say for this outro. Um, I actually made another outro when I was absolutely exhausted, and it was 11 at night, and I was just rambling. Um, I'm gonna save that for uh, the video part two because it's <laughs> it's interesting to hear me tired. Um, honestly, yeah. Thank you guys so much for the support on the magical girl thing. I will admit, please watch the video all the way through if you have questions, because some people are asking me like when the deadline is and like how to rank up and i'm like it's in the video um i'm not super mad about it it's just a little frustrating sometimes because i said a lot of stuff multiple times um yeah i'm trying to think honestly i have nothing really funky to say um oh i actually do want to ask you guys a question though how would you guys feel about me going live and like playing games and just talking because i think that'd be fun it honestly wouldn't be anything super serious i just want to have a good time with like my audience and yeah uh, I don't really have much to say for this outro. I will say, however, I have been watching so many uh, old shows. Like, I rewatched Kipo, uh, and it's called like, Kipo in the Age of the Wonder Beasts. Watch it. Okay, it is one of the best pieces of media I've ever fucking seen. It has a beautiful message that I still re think really stands with what's happening today in just other places of the world. It is so fucking amazing and important with its messages it's wonderful and also it's really cool because there's so many mixed kids in it like the main character is literally blasian and i've made it obvious <laughs> i'm a blasian girly love seeing myself on screen so it was it was really cool and i just think the show is amazing i've also been watching a bunch of avatar and Korra. i um have this thing where i repost every single Korra edit i see uh yeah my wife sent me every single one she got she yeah um and it was a lot so that's oh follow my tiktok if you want to see that i guess it is this on screen strawberry stab wound it should be the same yeah that's all we have to say today thank you guys so much for the support appreciate you guys like always hope you smile today please drink some water take care please drink some water take care of yourself and i hope you guys will watch my part too bye bye